Hi everyone, what's up? Today, I'm gonna to be taking on a challenge. Now, as a barista, I've literally pulled hundreds of thousands of espresso shots in my life. But dialing in the perfect shot on a new machine, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack, blindfolded, with one hand tied behind your back. Okay, maybe I took that a little bit too far. But it is a challenge, and it requires the skills of a ninja and the patience of a saint. And my one goal today is to not end up with a cup of disappointment with a side of frustration, because I know we've all been there. Now, let me get this machine prepared, and before we dive into the brewing process, let me tell you something about the tools I'm using today. So I'm not satisfied with the standard issue tools provided by Breville. So I'll be using some third-party tools from Normcore Wares. And I know some of you might be thinking, great, another coffee video that's just an elaborate ad for some fancy third-party tools. I can see where you're coming from, but hold on to your horses, my skeptical friends, as I'm really not here to be selling you any of this. I'm just a barista who knows what works best when brewing great coffee. And you can think of this like you wouldn't ask a carpenter to build a house without the right tools, would you? Same goes for us coffee lovers. We need the right gear to get the job done right. And let me tell you, these are like the Batman gadgets of the coffee world. They're sleek, they're efficient, they make me feel like a total badass while using them. And Normcore Wares has legitimate tools to fit all your Breville coffee machines. So if you are worried that this video is just a sneaky sales pitch, I assure you it's not. I'm just a coffee nerd sharing my passion and knowledge with you. Though, look, who knows? After maybe watching this video, you'll be convinced that Normcore Wares is the way to go. But no pressure, obviously. I'm not offended if you stick to your old tools. Just don't blame me if your coffee tastes like sadness and regret. Fair enough? All right, done with the chit chat. I really wanna make great coffee using the Breville Barista Express. So like this video, subscribe to the channel, and let's get this espresso party started. Now to make this dialing in video a little more impromptu, I'm gonna be using one of two coffees I've never tried before. And in front of me, I have a blend or a single origin. I'm gonna flip a coin to see which one I use today. Now, this blend, has tasting notes of marshmallow and chocolate brownie, which just sounds absolutely divine. And on your left, I have a Ethiopian, which has tasting notes of apricot, bergamot, and honey. This is right down my alley, but I honestly would be super keen to try either one of these. So let's just do the good old flip a coin and see which one I go for. Heads, I go the blend. Tails, which never fails, I go the Ethiopian. It's heads. Best out of three? Nah, let's do it. We're going the marshmallow brownie. All right, one of the most important things about brewing great espresso is following a recipe. I've made some great videos already that I'm gonna link up above in terms of what dialing in coffee means, how to brew to a recipe. But to quickly summarize here, uh, brewing great espresso and following a recipe is much like baking a cake. You follow a recipe to bake a cake, that way you can Follow that same recipe time and time again and it's consistent. And if it's a great recipe, it's gonna be a great cake. Same goes for espresso. Follow a good recipe and you can get consistent coffee time and time again. When I talk about a recipe, I'm talking about three things mainly. That is, we are gonna be weighing in our dose with a set of scales, which is really important. Using a set of scales is a big plus and a long way to achieving consistency time and time again. So weighing in the ground coffee that you use, weighing in the liquid coffee you get out, and then also measuring the time it takes to get the coffee. So that's really important. Freshly roasted coffee is also equally important. Now, when I say freshly roasted, you want it roasted within about a week. Like having it roasted, waiting a week, and then begin to use it is fantastic. That's the best time to be brewing espresso. And I would honestly keep it five to six weeks max. Then obviously staling happens and it's no longer fresh coffee. Fresh coffee tastes amazing. Now, most supermarkets, I would say probably don't offer freshly roasted coffee. So head down to your local coffee roaster, go search for it. You can buy it online. You can buy it right with us, but it's really important to get freshly roasted coffee because it makes all the difference. These guys have even given me a recipe with the coffee that I've gotten. So with this marshmallow brownie, this is really interesting. I'm gonna be using a dose of 20 grams and I'm going to be brewing out 44 grams of coffee out. So using 22 grams, no, sorry, 20 grams in, 44 grams out in 19 seconds. It's pretty fast. 
But that's okay. That's what it says I should be doing. So I should follow that and see how I go. This gives me a waypoint. This gives me some direction. Because previous to that, I could just be filling the basket, brewing until it looks good or until the machine stops, trying it and being like, what is the problem with me? Nothing. Brew to a recipe and you have somewhere, some direction. Let's get started. I have no idea what is going on in this machine. So I've given it plenty of time to heat up. That's nice and warm. All right, so there's your brew buttons. Uh, I've got filter size, single and double. Well, you know, I've swapped out the Breville baskets with a 20 gram basket. So it's, I, I'm, I guess it's definitely gonna be a double, not a single. Power button, I've got grind amount. That's kind of like halfway at the moment. Now in terms of grind sizes, uh, it's got one to 16 I see here. Uh, this will be really coarse and I probably don't want to go too fine either. I might just start at three. That seems like a good size for me and we'll see how that is. I have no idea. Let's see how we go. Like I said, the recipe, 20 grams in, 44 grams out in 19 seconds. Just, just remember what that is, keep that in mind. All right, don't imagine that's enough, but yeah, it's only 16 and a half grams. So I'm going for 20, gotta go 20. 20 grams. Now the Breville grinder, it's a little clumpy. I guess that's why I'm using the WDT tool. I don't want it to be clumpy at all. Clumpy grounds is no good. And a WDT tool is fantastic for declumping coffee. Looks good. Tap on the bench. Noise. Uh, let's do this. First coffee off the ranks. I don't know how long this is gonna go for, but I'm gonna push the double espresso button and I'm gonna stop it when it gets to 44 grams or just before that. Okay, that's not bad though, that, like, what was that? That's 40 grams in 24 seconds. That's actually not bad. Like I would be happy to drink this. Man, it's just so incredible that you can taste marshmallow. You can smell the marshmallow in the espresso. Little short on the espresso. I probably should have ran it a little bit longer. Yeah, that's pretty close. There's chocolate brownie coming out in that. I really want to get to the recipe though and see, see how different it is now. Just, I've got something to compare it against now. So what I'm gonna do is, that ran a little bit slow, I guess. So I was aiming for 19 seconds and 44 grams out, but I got 24 seconds, so it went longer than I wanted it to, and I got less than I wanted out. So it was running quite slow. Uh, I wanna speed it up, the espresso up, and uh, and see what that like the comparison tastes like. And what's really cool is that Breville have this visual cue on the side of the machine next to the grind size dial, and this is going to help you adjust the grind size depending on how fast your espresso brews. The idea to dialing in is trying to get it within three shots. That's the important part. Get it within three shots. Taste them as you go. See how they differ. Um, so right now I'm going to adjust the grind size coarser. I think I'm just gonna go coarser by, what is it? It's dial three at the moment. I'm gonna go to dial four and see what happens. I don't know. Oh yeah, so as before, I'm gonna aim for 20 grams in the basket again. Uh, and I'm gonna make sure uh, it was 16 and a half grams last time. So grind amount, I'm just gonna turn this up by the obscure amount that it might be. I have no idea how much more that's gonna go in the basket. Twenty-two grams. Yeah, let's just uh, let's head back the other way. Sweet. All right. Gonna fluff these grinds up again. Beautiful WDT tool does its magic. 
distribute and tamp. All right, that was better, 44 grams. So it was around 22 seconds, so it was a little bit faster, which is good. And I got 44 grams out, whereas the previous coffee I got to 40 grams out in 24 seconds, so I got the right amount out, uh, and it was just a little bit faster than before. So I'm happy with that. Definitely looks much creamier. Oh, smells more marshmallowy if that's a possible thing. Oh, this is delicious. As it cools down, you're getting the, uh, I don't know, that chocolate brownie kind of comes through behind the marshmallows. It's pretty neat. Um, let's try one more, hey? Let's try one more. Whoa, that was 45 grams, 47 grams in like 20 seconds. Yeah, so that's kind of like, that's where we're at though. That's where we're at. That's where we want to be. That's looking creamy. That's looking dark and rich. It's real, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at that. So good. There it is. Oh yeah, that's definitely, like I'm impressed they get marshmallow. I've, I've never tasted marshmallow in coffee before. I'm really impressed with this coffee, I gotta say. Tastes delicious. And this is the shot. I think the first shot just ran a little bit too slow. It was just overpoweringly kind of, not rich, but just too, too, too something. Didn't like it. This next one was getting close, but I don't feel like it was sweet enough. This has all the sweetness of marshmallow. And like I said, as it cools down, it just richens up. It just gets darker and more like chocolate brownie, which is really cool. Oh man, that's amazing. All right, now I know the Breville Barista Express has, has a bunch of different buttons on it from choosing the filter size, you just keep it standard. I just keep it double or single, but you can program it. So what's really important is that you get the same dose out each time. So I'm weighing it on my scale. So it's gonna be 20 grams each time. Really doesn't matter what configuration I have here. As long as I get 20 grams in the basket every time, I'm good. Proceed. The grind size is dictated by how fast your coffee is going to brew out. Now, I adjusted it once to from three to four and that seemed to work for me. And single or double button, these are totally programmable. So you can literally have these at whatever length you want. Ideally, you have your single button as a flush. So you just hit that, it flushes and then it stops, which it doesn't right now, so I'm just gonna program it. Oh, that's right, program. Done, and it's programmed, that's great. Push that button again, and it stops. It's a nice little purge button going on there. And then, now we're gonna program a double espresso button to brew out the same amount of coffee each time with our last cup. Let's do that now. Now, I haven't totally mastered the dose on this machine. It seems to give me too much most times, uh, and I would probably prefer to go too less and then just top it up. So that's probably the best way to approach this. I don't feel like you're going to be getting a super consistent dose each time. Underdosing and then just kind of tapping, checking, tapping, checking is gonna be the best way to reduce your waste overall. So you're not obviously throwing out two or three grams each time. You got there, nice one. Let's see if this uh, purge button works now.
Yep, I'm okay with that. Now just quickly here, a great feature with using a puck screen, which was that little metal disc I placed on the top of the tamped coffee. There's almost zero cleaning required of the shower screen after brewing your coffee. And that coffee puck usually comes out super dry and in one piece, nice and clean always. That's why I love using a puck screen. Now back to the espresso. Ah, damn, that's so good. Damn, that's so good. Now I think all too often, we approach these machines with all these gadgets and all these buttons and an inbuilt grinder, imagining that it's just going to do everything you need it to do at the push of a button. But we do have control. We have control to make things better. Now, how far we take those things, as good as we possibly can, it's totally up to you. I have all these gadgets, I use them all, I spend a little bit of time to make better coffee each morning, which is just, some part of what I enjoy doing as a barista. And I love drinking great coffee, but there is diminishing returns. I can do a few more things, but would it make the coffee taste even better? Marginally better? But am I happy with this coffee? You gotta ask yourself, at what point are you happy with the coffee? And, and if you get to that point, that's pretty well where I draw the line personally. Now, there are others who will take it even further and that's fine too. I just think, Definitely not stopping until you're happy with the coffee is the first thing. And then once you're happy with it, knowing how you got there to keep it consistent. Because certainly as a barista, I've taken it further and you can go so far that all of a sudden you, you're not too sure where to rein it back or where to take it back to because you're not sure where the tasty coffee was at that point. You've just been hypercritical the whole time. Whereas if you get to a point where you're just like, yes, this is delicious coffee, it's a good place to stop. And then from that point, change only one thing at a time or change a small thing and then try beyond that to slowly incrementally improve your coffee. But really it comes down to making sure that you have uh, a consistent recipe that you're using to achieve great coffee, using freshly roasted beans, using filtered water also makes a huge difference. Filtered water in the bottom, freshly roasted coffee, a recipe, get those things right. <sighs> you're gonna be tasting great coffee. Programming this button does make a huge difference to using this machine. I'm not gonna talk again more on the dose because I really feel like uh, adjusting the grind is quite simple, but getting the dose consistent each time, you wanna get a set of scales. That's gonna make a huge difference. Use that same set of scales to weigh your coffee out, then program your button to weigh the coffee out, and that will make a huge difference because you'll get the same amount each time. And then from there, well, the world's your espresso. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and uh, happy brewing. See you next video.